five European nations, the pigs, Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Greece, and Spain. The joke was that all these politicians had spent so much and acted like pigs that why not just create an acronym to describe them all? <laughs> Unfortunately, these five nations brought down the entire European <laughs> Union. <laughs> a crisis that lasts even until 2013. In fact, this problem is compounded because The Economist notes, as of yesterday, that currently politicians are playing the blame game when it comes to Cyprus by telling continually each other that, say, the European Commission or the European Central Bank or the European Union is responsible for Cyprus's troubles. Consequently, Europe seems to be in a bit of a sticky mess when it comes towards Cyprus. However, Bloomberg Business Week notes on March 18th, 2013, that the only way to solve this crisis would be to focus on strong central economic policy, which is why it calls for new economic leaders. Unfortunately, when turning towards France's Nicolas Sarkozy, he seems belittled by actual politics. Meanwhile, Chancellor Angela Merkel of Germany seems to have no control over her populace. In the end, the need for a new economic leader is incredibly high. And instead, the European Union should turn towards Mario Draghi, head of the European Central Bank. And because European economic policy has huge ramifications for trade with the United States, and because Europe's critical towards maintaining American foreign policy across the globe through NATO, it's imperative to answer in today's question. Should EU President Mario Draghi take a stronger role in guiding EU economic policy? And the answer is a clear yes. First, because it would be more lenient on bailout terms. Second, because it would be friendly towards increasing inflation. And finally, because it would actually help prop up the idea of European democracy. Now first, European politicians seem too concerned about making sure to cut back on pork barrel spending. But according to the American Enterprise Institute on March 18th, 2013, when you can turn towards Cyprus, the European Union and the International Monetary Fund, two of the three members of the infamous Troika, are actually putting an economic condition on an $8 billion loan package towards the nation of Cyprus. These conditions include heavily reduced spending, highly increased taxes, and at one point they even considered imposing a levy on Cyprus's bank accounts. This would obviously be devastating towards the Cypriot economy. That's why it's worrying when the Peterson Institute for International Economics notes on March 29, 2013, that Cyprus could become the model for future European economic policy when it comes towards developing nations. Unfortunately, this would be disastrous, because when these nations have low economic growth, the only way to avoid that is to prop up growth, but that requires higher spending and lower taxation, both of which are not included in any European bailout packages. Because of this, European Union policy is actually against this. However, Mario Draghi, the head of the European Central Bank, was the third member of the European Troika. Instead of the European Union and the International Monetary Fund imposing these restrictions, Mario Draghi would have actually been far more lenient. It would have actually helped prop up the economy. That's why the Cato Institute notes on March 17th of 2013, the lower bailout packages would have actually meant a far faster recovery in Europe than actual these restrictive packages. But in addition, it's important to make sure that developing countries can still bring home the bacon. And that's why the Wall Street Journal notes on April 4th, 2013, that currently, inflationary policies within developing nations are far too high. Specifically, Mario Draghi's criticized the way that the European Central Bank has actually been stuck at keeping European inflation levels at below 1.7%, and mortgage refinancing rates at about 0.75%. This can be disastrous towards developing countries, because according to Ruchir Sharma in his 2012 book, Breakout Nations, in search of the next economic miracle, high inflation rates are critical towards long-term economic growth developing nations because they're often dependent on exports, which are benefited by a weak currency. Unfortunately, since these currencies are kept extraordinarily low, developing countries have had economic troubles, with the result of the in almost entire European Union collapsing because of economic troubles within developing nations. So Mario Draghi would actually increase inflation within the European Union, which in the midterm could actually help developing nations prop up economic growth. So it's clear that Mario Draghi needs to take a stronger approach towards economic growth in this regard. That's why the Atlantic notes on April 1st, 2013, the European Union needs to be far more lenient with its inflation and actually help prop up growth within developing economies to ensure that in the long term, the European Union can solve its economic and fiscal crises. In the end, low inflationary rates can be extremely hard and make it difficult for devil and make it awkward for developing nations to transition. And speaking of awkward transitions, my third point <laughs> realize that democracy actually needs to be proposed with the European Union. But unfortunately, that isn't happening. Brookings Institute notes on March 18th, 2013, that economic policy within Europe is focused far too much on a central government and the decentralization.
decentralization needs to happen. Specifically, the Brookings Institute discussed the idea of federalism in Europe, and proposing, say, individual states that help guide federal economic policy within the United States of Europe. However, that really isn't going to be possible unless Mario Draghi actually takes action. And it notes that the European Central Bank could be a model on which to build a federalist European Union because its policy is divided into, divi into individual regional banks. In fact, according to Bloomberg on March 17, 2013, additionally, decentralization needs to happen within the economy as well, because currently, one currency is not enough for developing and developed economies. So, tiered currency systems could actually be created by economists and specifically by European Central Bank Commissioner Mario Draghi. By creating a tiered currency, this would actually solve problems within the European Union. So Mario Draghi has strong incentives to actually try to decentralize European power and help Europe create a better system for governance in the long term, both by creating a federalist system and by helping decentralization. In fact, that's why the Heritage Foundation notes on March 18th of 2013, the European Union needs to take far more of an approach towards long-term solvency instead of focusing on propping up failing banks and countries. And the only way that can happen is if individual countries have more power and if a tiered economic system is created, both of which Mario Draghi would be in favor of. So at the end of the day, did we answer today's question? Should ECB President Mario Draghi take a stronger role in guiding European Union economic policy? And the answer was a clear yes, for three reasons. First, because it would actually be more lenient with bailout packages. Second, because it would focus on reducing inflation rates. And finally, because in the long term, we would propose a more democratic system, which would help confront these crises should they occur. So at the end of the day, it's clear that the pigs had the day in 2007, all the way leading up to today. But with clever reforms, the European Central Bank hopefully should be able to help the European Union come back from the brink and once again be prosperous.